Hi, I'm Sean Crouch and I'm the Technical Manager at Cortona 3D and in this session we're going to focus on the catalogue tool part of the Rapid Author solution. So what the catalogue tool does is it lets a author take source 3D CAD geometry and bill of materials and then reuse those to very quickly create either interactive HTML parts catalogues or 2D or 3D PDF parts catalogues. So what we're going to do is start off the demonstration by just having a look at an example that we've done already. So I have my demonstration launcher here. Let me just click on this example. So what we can see is some content that is published and already authored from the catalog tool. And you see here that it's deployed in the Internet Explorer environment. This was generated automatically, um, so nobody had to, uh, no programmer had to create the HTML. This was just literally uh, click one click button and it generates the code. So we can see that it's hotspotted. If we mouse over the 3D part, you can see it's hotspotted with the detailed parts list on the right hand side. Likewise, if I mouse over the parts list on the right hand side, you see it hotspots with the 3D model. If I put the mouse over a particular part, it will identify it. So you can see here that it's telling me in the pop-up window this item 130 and the casing. And you can see here that as the end user, I can roll the model around, zoom in, zoom out, pan the camera, and generally look at that uh, from whatever angle that I wish. So if we want to see a sub-assembly in more detail, what we can do is drill down into a catalogue sheet that shows that you know, in more detail. So if I right click on this sub-assembly, we can see that there's some relevant sheets here. So if I go and select uh, this particular one. So this is another view that was authored very quickly within the catalogue view, an exploded view. The transition between the assembled and the exploded view uh, didn't have to be set up. Uh, the software just animates naturally those transformations. So we can go in and zoom in on now on the detailed parts. And what I can do is if I want to go and select some parts which I want to communicate with my uh, colleague or I want to send to the parts procurement department so that they can maybe get some prices on these parts, I can actually click on the export to Excel and if we click on that we can come over and we can see there it's automatically pushed those parts out uh, in the um, spreadsheet. What we can also do is see a 2D view. So uh, sometimes some uh, users actually prefer to see a 2D view. So if I click on this button, here's a 2D view that was generated automatically from the tool. So no illustrator had to draw this. We just took the 3D CAD geometry, clicked a button and it generated that. And now as a user, we can see the um, endpoint. So you can see here that it's completely hotspotted. So again, this is automatically generated. So it's hotspotted from the diagram to the parts list. And if I click on the parts list here, you can see there that it's also um, hotspotted the other way as well. We can see some other views that we've authored from within the tool. So here is a section view. So again, the section view is a great way of showing the internals of the assembly. And again, this was uh, authored from within the tool. And here's a 2D view of that section view as well with the hotspots. And finally, what we've got is a call out view. And so the call out view just shows uh, addition of objects to show 3D call outs. Okay, so let's go and have a look at the tool, see how easy it is to actually create that information. So here I am in the catalog tool. This is what the author uses to create the content. What we're going to do in this example is use one where we've already imported the content in. So in my demonstration examples here, I'm going to choose the pump IPC imported. So this is the data in an imported state. We can see, if I click down the item tree, we can see the CAD structure. 
So this is exactly as the CAD structure is in the source data. So the author has a consistent way of being able to view the data. Uh, if they want to import the data in, let me just show you that part of the tool. So if we click on the imported uh, import data, you can see that we have a number of different sections here for what's called the plugins. So the plugins are the translators which contain the business rules and business logic for bringing in certain data formats. So here you can see all of our standard importers for the different CAD standards. So Inventor, Katia, NX, Pro Engineer, Solid Edge, SolidWorks. We also support open standards such as JT and in the universal IGIS and STEP. Uh, we can also bring in VRML. What we also have is custom plugins as well. So we can actually configure business rules for you uh, which pro, uh, provide you know, maybe a set of pre-processing -proce pre uh, business rules to reconcile data sets, so a separate bill of materials from an ERP system, for example, and the CAD geometry uh, bill of materials uh, actually in the CAD source itself. So we've already imported this data. We can see that by default it's not shown. Uh, this is deliberate, just lets the author manipulate the assembly, remove anything that's not uh, central to the uh, document that he's actually creating and then what we can do when we're happy with that is select the appropriate level, click on show solid and hey presto there is our model. So you can see here it's got a fairly low level of detail. What I can do is if I select the particular part in the hierarchy, in fact if I just select the casing we can just show the effect of changing the level of detail so if I select medium quality there then we get slightly more detail, if I go up to high quality even better and if I go up to initial which is 100% so what that does is just change the number of polygons that defines that particular part and so brings up and emphasizes that level of detail in that particular part. So great for tuning the size of the um, output documentation. Also great for uh, being able to tune the graphics performance of the um, end model as well. Uh, this is a fairly small model, um, but the size is actually reduced anyway. So the source data here is about a couple of megabytes. And what you'll see when we publish this out is that the end size is about 300 kilobytes so you know quite a decent saving in terms of what we do with the translation so this is quite a small model we're actually going to throttle up the uh, assembly so that we've got a hundred percent definition there so we've got much a little more greater level of detail if we want to change some colors of the parts we can do that as well so i'm going to the edit material and we have metallic colors here and some different other colors here, so primary colors or metallic colors. So if I want to select a different metallic color, we could just do that. So if you bring your model in with CAD colors and you want to make it a little more realistic, then this is going to let you do that. I'm going to go back to the original colors because I'm happy with that. Down the bottom here, we have the detailed parts list. So the detailed parts list is where we author the text. The text is usually generated automatically from the data that you actually bring in. But you know you can, as the author, actually come in here and change and add additional attributes and data to this. So you can see here, if we change the casing, as this one's already been changed, you can see that um, a little red bar here shows that we've actually made a change to that. If I come down to another one, you can see that we can actually include other types of attributes. So again, this one is to do with this particular standard, which is S1000D, but we can actually configure these in for you um, to fit your requirements. So you can see here we can actually have pop-up lists and different metadata fields to augment and enhance the data. Also, this detailed parts list was automatically reconciled with the 3D geometry and if I just click on the little grey button there you can see that indicates that it's automatically being linked.